Welcome everyone to this video. I'm Karen Eiten. I am a business sewing coach. So I help people who have sewing shops or maybe they don't consider themselves a sewing business yet, but they may like to have a sewing business, but they are fearful of starting a sewing uh, business. So I help people who are interested in making income from their sewing skills and talents. So I am interested in helping anyone out there who is, um, you know, a sewer who likes to sew and is interested in um, creating revenue, right? Creating revenue either with products that they make and sell or products or uh, a service, um, excuse me, so a service also. So products or a service, um, I would be interested in helping you. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get on to this video. This video is why start a sewing business? Why would you wanna do it, right? And we're gonna actually give you some numbers today so you can kind of have some sort of a idea um, on what different sewing businesses kind of make, right, annually, who, you know, and this can kind of maybe um, you know, set your, um, ideas flowing, you know, like, um, for a sewing business. Um, maybe you were interested in doing one type of sewing and then maybe now after viewing this or listening to this video, you may be interested in another. So, and I also work with people who already have a sewing business, which who is not bringing in the revenue that they deserve. Their sewing shop is stagnant and I would love to help those people restructure their business so they're able to start earning the revenue they deserve. So um, I restructured mine. I actually took four years off. I was running a tailor shop and multiple tailor shops um, in my 24, 25 years of sewing business of you know, tailoring. Um, and I always worked on men's garments, right? A lot of men's tailoring, a lot of men's suits. And I took four years off to write a book and to do some other work on myself and some other education. And then I just opened my shop uh, a couple weeks ago um, doing more of the bridal and fine sewing, right? So I had to reshift, I had to rethink. Um, not that my tailor shop wasn't successful and it wasn't doing good at the end. It was just, I got bored with always working on men's suits, right? I got bored with constantly working in hemming pants, right? It was just like more to me, more creativeness to me. So now I also make uh, wedding accessories. So when brides come in, they can actually, you know, buy some earrings or buy some other things that they like to make, right? And I try to do all of my... Uh, accessories uh so so most of my accessories so i don't just hot glue everything together and that's the way that it is um i do try to do more sewing than uh anything else so anyway so we're going to get into more about you and more how to help you okay so when uh you start a business you you know you must have some sort of a skill set um must you know you must have some sort of a required skill set because if you don't have some sort of sewing already, it's very hard to get started. Now, maybe you have the skills and things for um, parts of a, a sewing shop, but you don't have the skills maybe for the other part, right? And that's where I want to help you to bring the two parts together. So maybe you have some sewing skills on some things, but you don't have enough on uh, other things. And then where I can help you to teach you to be able to learn some of these other tools and these other uh, skills that you need to put it both together and to be able to run a successful little sewing shop, right? Um, so, and they are profitable. Um, they don't make, you know, huge, huge amounts of money unless you're really like commercialized and you're, um, you know, you have employees and all that stuff, uh, which you could get there one day if that's what you dream and that's what you want. Um, but anyway, starting out takes a little more, um, you know, you just want to start out first, right? <laughs> and get going, right? So it just depends on what type of a um, interest you have, what type of a business that you want to lead into or what type of business you already have um, and what really your interest is, right? So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to give you five ways um, that you can start a sewing business and you can um, earn the income you deserve. So there's many different types of sewers out there. There's many types of different businesses out there that pertain to sewing, right? 
So number one is a clothing designer. So you could be a clothing designer if you're interested in clothing, fashion, and all that stuff. Um, you, where you sew and design clothing for the public, right? So either you would, um, you know, of course, you'd have to have the skill set to be able to fit these people. You'd have to have the skill set uh, to be able to sew these garments for your particular clients um, and things like that. So you would just have to uh, know what it is you offer, know what you're going to be designing, and then start doing it, right? And then do it over and over and over again to be able to get really, really good at it, right? So anyway, a clothing designer, and I got these numbers off of Google. So um, you can go and, you know, click in, you know, different uh, sewing businesses and, you know, their annual income, things like that. And to find out the same numbers that I did, um, I did a little bit of researching through Google is how I came up with these numbers. And I read quite a few different articles to come up with these figures. So that's where I got my information from. And so that's where we're going to start. Now, most of these figures are on the low side. I took kind of like the low side of what you could do, right? So a clothing designer, and you would have to, you know, to be a clothing designer, eventually you would have to, to make this kind of money, you would have to really um, market and really be able to produce. You know, there's a lot of sewers out there who would love to have some sort of a sewing shop and some sort of a, a, a offer to offer the public but you have to really be able to produce, right? You have to be able to work hard and to be able to produce the product that it is that you want to produce because there's many sewers out there, out there who take you know days and days and days to finish something and if you're that type of a, a sewer, it's going to be very hard for you to create the revenue that you would like to create. So you have to also learn to speed up your sewing, but still do a really quality job, right? So you'll have to uh, practice and practice and practice to get good at one or two things uh, to make them multiple times over and over and over again to get your skills down pat, right? You can't just keep going off to so many different things. You have to stick with one thing and run with it, okay? So a clothing designer makes anywhere from 74,000, that's if you're, you know, marketing and you're promoting yourself and things, uh, 74,000 on up. So um, that's really good money, right? That's decent money. That makes a nice living. Um, you know, especially when you get into some of the higher numbers, which you could. So, but you have to take a lot of your skill set of what it is um, you're capable of, what it is you need to learn, and to be able to work from that. Work with what you have and then keep constantly growing and learning more and building from that. Take some courses, hire some coaches, hire a mentor. Uh, do something where you're constantly growing in this area of your dream business, right? So you want to be able to do that. Now, I said I got these figures from Google, so you want to kind of be, you know, a little bit, you know, you know, look it up yourself, you know, this is what I'm saying, you know, this is what I did, this is research I came up with, but if you're, you know, you can go ahead and research it yourself also. So anyway, so number two is an alteration business, right? And so you can make anywhere from, some alteration businesses are very, very small. They make less than this. They're saying 53,000 and up, but um, some make less than that, way less than that. It's how much money, energy, and effort you wanna put into it, right? If you have a really great commercial location, if you're in a busy district, busy, busy area of, you know, say in California, say in, uh, Florida, say in, you know, some of these really highly populated areas, you can do really well and way above these figures, right? I'm just being really modest. I'm being uh, truthful and um, facing reality. You have to be able to be in some of these really high populated areas to be able to make those hundred grand a year uh, marks, right? Or you have to have people coming in all the time and employees. You can't do it on your own, I'll tell you that. So anyway, so alter, alteration business is nice. You alter clothing, you do fittings for clients, and you want them to be able to feel confident in their clothing and stylish. That's what alterations is all about. 
Anybody can buy a suit off the rack or a dress off the rack and wear it to a function, right? But if you want to look a-okay and you want to look super, you want to get the alterations to fit your body type, right? So you give these people the confidence they need to walk into these events and to feel great about themselves, right? That's what alteration business really does. It boosts people's confidence in how they look in their clothing, okay? So number three is to sew products to sell online. So you can sell, you know, a product, you can sell one product, you can sell multiple products if you like to just sew and design products. And then you can sell on different marketplaces online, not only Etsy and Bonanza and eBay and things like that, but other ones as well. And you can get into some of the European marketplaces and start selling um, you know, online. Some shops, um, you know, you start off low probably because you're just getting started, of course, but as time goes on, there's people out there selling products and even digital products, and they're making a million dollars a year, right? So it just depends on what it is you stick to and you do a really great job at it and people want it, right? And you can make a lot of money. So then we're gonna go on to number four. So number four um, idea of a sewing business is a slip cover business. So you can make just slip covers for furniture, right? You make slip covers for chairs, you'd make slip covers for love seats, sofas, and anything else people would want. So uh, they start off right about 89,000 a year. And it really just depends on, um, like I said, how much, you know, marketing you do, how much promoting you do, how much you pay for your ads, how much you put yourself out there, and if you're putting yourself out there in a really populated area where a lot, a lot of people are going to see your ads and things, right? So, you know, these figures really don't mean a whole lot. It just kind of gives you some sort of a ballpark figure, but they really don't mean a, a whole lot until you put the work into what it is you love, what you desire to do. And you have to really have a passion for what it is you want to do. Because if that passion's not there, you don't wake up every day like wanting to run to your sewing machine. These businesses are probably not for you, right? So you want to make sure that your passion is there. You really have a liking for what you do um, and what you want your dream to unfold, right? How you want it to unfold. So that's what makes the big difference. When you put your skills and talents with your pa along with your passion and really make something awesome, right? So, okay, so we're gonna go on to number five. And number five is a custom, a sewing custom curtain business. So you could be sewing pleated drapes, you could be sewing valances, making cornices, making blinds, making all these different things that relate to covering people's windows, right? And there's a big need for that. Um, please excuse the phone. It never stops. So, um, so anyway, you want to be able to, um, you know, do that, right? So you want to be able to, you know, have the skill set to be able to make pleated drapes, to be able to make valances, to be able to make cornices. Cornices is with the wood. You cover it with foam, and then you cover it with material, right? Um, and I used to make those even in my tailor shop business. It was another little stream of income and it really helped m boost my, um, my revenue, right? My numbers. So, and it was a lot of fun and I did a lot of it with my, um, my son and, um, it was really pretty darn cool. Okay. So that is, uh, the five different tips that I wanted to give you today. I just want to make sure that I gave you all of them. Yeah, I think I did. So, you know, it's really something to think about. It's something to think about, uh, first of all, if you have a love and a passion for sewing. And then it also is to take a really good look um, at your sewing skills. You know, what skills do you have? What talent do you have that maybe you haven't tapped into yet? Um, so it really, um, how much money you want to put into it, um, what you want to get out of it. Are you doing it just for the love and you don't want to have it just to make money from other people? Um, it, 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 it's a whole array of different things, you know, to really think about and to be real about it, you know, face what it is your skill set is right now today. Okay. And then say, 
you know, a year or two years from now, what is your skill set going to be? Is it going to be at the same uh, place it is now, uh, two years from now? Or are you going to invest enough into yourself to where you learn more skills? You are, uh, you know, bringing yourself to be able to have that sewing uh, business dream, right? So it really depends on what it is you want to put into it. Um, maybe you just want to do it part time. Maybe you're not looking to um, have, you know, a full business. You just want to shop, maybe just to sell things online. Um, maybe you just want to run some sort of a service, you know, and you could do other services too. And let me tell you, like, since my background is from alteration and tailoring, um, just because you maybe only know how to hem pants and maybe you only know how to hem skirts and maybe you can only like, um, you know, shorten things or something like that. It doesn't mean that you can't start small in offering that, you know, and just when people call and when you put ads out there, you know, you just say to them, I do strictly pant hems. I do strictly, um, you know dress hymns or whatever it is, one little skill can still bring you in some revenue, right? Um, so make sure people know what it is you offer. Um, and then you'll start speaking to the right people. And, um, and then those people will start to, um, you know, want to reach out to you, right? And for your um, expertise. So, and then you can still build on those other skills as you as time goes on, right? Um, but you have to start somewhere. You have to start small, you have to start somewhere, and you have to really have the love and passion for it. And there's a lot of sewing shops out there nowadays that may have been alteration shops, or they may have been, and you could also, if you have an embroidery machine, you can even add embroidery uh, business to this. There's just so much that I didn't put it all down, but there's just so many different things that you could add to this uh, list. Um, but I just wanted to keep it simple. And anyway, um, you know, you could add embroidery to this this list here. Um, but what I was saying is, um, so, you know, if you wanted, I'm saying that there are other sewing shops out there that are already in business, right? And their business may be stagnant and they're not getting the, the revenue that they want, right? And they desire, you know, and they sit there hopelessly, uh, and scared to make a move to change anything. At some point in time, you have to ask yourself, is this working for me? You know, is this really working for me? Is this really what I want to do? Just like I did, right? Um, I wanted to go back into business and I wanted to go back into doing some sort of sewing three days a week. Um, but I didn't want to keep doing denim hems and I didn't want to keep doing men's pants and I didn't want to keep you know, doing, working on men's suits, you know, um, I still work on men's suits, but not like, um, you know, that's all that's coming in, you know, so now that I'm in business again, I can pick and choose what I want to work on and what I don't, right, I want to work on the finer things, the things that are less hard on your sewing machine, right, the things that are less hard on my hands, right, the finer fabrics, the fabrics that don't take a lot of um, you know, muscle or whatever, you know? Um, so I like working on the finer things. I just kind of, uh, redefined my business, right? When I went back into business now again for, uh, working on wedding garments and things like that, formal wear. Um, so it just is a matter of people getting out of that headset, that, that strong. And I've talked to so many businesses that, are already, you know, in business sewing, but they don't want to shift their business to make something else work, another stream of income. They don't want to um, face reality that their numbers are really down. They don't want to face the fact that I should really change something here in my business, or I should offer another service to go along with it, right? Or maybe for the last 10 years, you've been, um, you know, making clothing for people and all of a sudden you're like, you know, I'm tired of making clothing for people. Um, I'm not getting enough, um, you know, people or whatever. Now I'm going to shift my business into maybe also making things to sell them online, right? 
and maybe you're a shop out there, a sewing shop that's never been online before. There's many of them I talk to. They don't even have a business listing online. They don't have a Facebook page. <clears throat> Excuse me. They don't have anything. Uh, so all they're waiting for is to someone to somehow walk through their door, right? Um, and and that's not always going to happen in this day and age, you know? Excuse me one thing, second. <clears throat> it takes a different way to think nowadays because most people are online. And if you don't have your business online, people are not going to find you, right? So we want to be able to have uh, something that finally s states that your business, your sewing talents and skills is listed online. You are going to start getting people to reach out to you from online source, right? And this can help you to put you on the map that, hey, you know, you, you're defining yourself like, yes, I offer this service. Yes, I can do this for people. And you're actually standing up to the plate to take customers and clients in and to be able to open your arms to them, right? And to be able to do a good service for them. So it just takes a little bit of a shift in your business. And, you know, maybe you're a person that's always been sewing and all you've ever done is sew products to sell online on Etsy and Bonanza and eBay and, you know, a lot of these a lot of these marketplaces. And maybe now you're saying, wow, my sewing skills are pretty sharp, you know? Uh, maybe I could offer something else where people walk in my door and I can make another stream of income other than selling online, right? It works both ways. Um, so that's all I'm saying is that you want to um, be real about it and you wanna be able to um, you know, make more than one income to really boost your revenue, right? So that's all I'm saying, to think of things in a different way than what you've thought before and to think of your shop in a different form than what you've thought before, right? Um, it it kind of gets things moving to like, hey, what do I really like? Maybe you like something a little bit different. Like one of my first clients, she was um, in more in the embroidery business, right? And she's like, you know, her and her husband had worked in the embroidery business and done embroidery for, you know, tons of other businesses and stuff, offering a service, you know. And now she's like, you know, I'd like to do what I really want to do, you know. She's a little bit, you know, getting up in age and she's like, I want to do something I want to do, you know. And so she shifted her business a little bit more to what she wants to do. She wants to make an embroider what she wants to make an embroider and start selling online, which I think is awesome. So hopefully she's doing awesome and wonderful. Uh, she was when I last talked to her and she was so happy to go through the program and to be able to shift her business to what it is she wants to be doing now. You know, something that's really truly in her heart. She has a passion for and she's going to do just fantastic. I know she is. Uh, but anyway, it just takes that. It takes that time to where you, uh, you know, face reality within yourself and say, I waited for customers so long. I've waited for my revenue numbers to get up there for so long. Maybe it is time to change something. Maybe it is time to do things a little differently. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, by the way, my name is Karen Eight, and if I didn't mention it earlier, I think I did. Um, but anyway, I'm going to uh, uh, take off now and sign off and uh, get my day going in a different direction. I have some other videos to make and some other uh, things. I'd like to cut out some clutch purses today that I'm going to be making some little handbags for my shop, uh, sewing accessories in my shop that people can pick up when they bring and drop off alterations and some of my things that I list online. So anyway, I'm going to uh, play around with that idea and do some of the little purses today and uh, some other little things. So thanks so much for watching this video. I love to help you, people who want to do and help themselves, you know, to get out of the stuck situation and to improve their situation when it comes to sewing. And I'd love to work with you too. So if you'd like to reach out to me, I'll put the link below where you can schedule a discovery call with me where we can talk on the phone about your business and how you'd like to bring it to um, you know, how you'd like to either bring a business about or how you would like to shift your business, whatever the case may be. Um, anyway, and we can just talk about your business and um, your uh, passion and skill set and all that really good stuff. Okay, so thanks so much for watching. Uh, put a uh, 
Comment below if you have any questions. And also go ahead and like this video and subscribe to this channel. I really need some subscribers out there. And if you are a sewing enthusiast and you've been following me along and you love my videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button today so we can get more uh, in the algorithm of YouTube and things like that. Thanks so much. Bye-bye now.